As accurate publicly available CFD models with wind tunnel data go, there is approximately one. The driver model is a celebration of Europe's Captain Average from 2010. Created by TU Munich in conjunction with BMW and Volkswagen, it is a mashing together of both a 3 Series and an A4 model. It's a project most helpful when developing CFD solvers. Not so helpful for me as I'm just using the standard open foam, simple foam solver that is well established. Helpful if you're new to CFD as it establishes some sanity in the CFD world full of, well, let's say obscure results. The case has a tutorial write-up provided by the excellent resources of Wolf Dynamics. Going through these presentation slides, it gives a basic introduction into the important functionality of steady state CFD cases. Then there is some post-processing stuff. The pictures are nice, but the comparative results are where we're going to get our information. Out of all the data available, the wind tunnel data will be our reference. Wind tunnels have inaccuracies, but they are using real air. In this case, a tunnel with a moving ground and a decent cross-section is 1 to 2.5 scale, with modular components, most notably interchangeable rear cabin versions from a fastback, notchback and then a state. Now as the wind tunnel model is scaled, the Reynolds number is important as I'll be using the full-sized model. Their reference length is 1.84 meters. The changing coefficient of drag, Cx, decreases with a high Reynolds number. Plateauing for the fastback with a smooth floor and moving ground at around 0.241. Close correlation with the CFD cases is expected and it is 0.243 from open foam. This is the same result Wolf Dynamics gets. I was getting frustrated by a lower than expected result at a CX of 0.229, a 5.7% difference. Though this difference isn't really concerning, it shouldn't exist. Going through all the parameters, measuring the cross section that was annoyingly never mentioned, the Y plus values and etc. Then I noticed that the reference model has a positive lift and I have a negative lift. Then remembering I changed the height of the model such that it runs 15mm lower, it now makes sense. Looking at other published data on this model, there is definitely results. It's 5.7% difference doesn't look too bad, unfortunately. But the reality of CFD is, if you can identify where the differences arise and then account for them, useful results still can be gleaned. Anyway, the results and mapping the characteristics of this model. The characteristic plot from the experiment is over the top and bottom of the model. This maps the shape of the body through pressure fields. There is a significant difference in the plot from the wind tunnel model and that given by CFD. Taken at specific points on the wind tunnel model, you can get a good idea of the characteristic pressure field. The publisher of the original study went to the effort of mapping the points in CFD. I spent an embarrassing amount of time mapping the top separately from the bottom. With a small amount of concern, it had these spikes caused by the panel edges. There is a presentation that also has these. So if you can find a random PDF on the internet that has the same plot as you, everything is now justified. Placing them over each other, the misalignment is because I did it for the notchback. So see how different the notchback is? Placing them deliberately on the same plot, there is a difference that is illustrative of the drag result. A regular viewer of these videos would understand that the fastback should have the lowest drag because of the wake management. However, what is not expected is the floor of the fastback that has a lower pressure than the notchback. This is counter the CX values where the notchback has slightly better negative lift. Then the estate with the wake management from the hatchback spoiler has the wake filled mostly with the air from under the floor resulting in better lift properties at the expense of drag. 
Finally, the flow structure around the body is new here, so I'll look at this for a bit. The estate is basically a stretch hatchback, we have seen this. The sedan and the fastback have the addition of a rear window vortex. Before the hatchback included the rear spoiler, there were similar vortices, but were much larger, containing a substantial amount of energy. These contain much less energy, particularly for the fastback, as they almost don't exist. There is a hint of them here. The A-pillar vortex is basically the same length, though it travels further to get to the same place. In conclusion, the notchback tends to be a more popular shape due to the increased cabin size relative to fastback. But with more efficiency gains for the fastback, the sedan shape has tended to converge by increasing the height of the rear and smoothing it off. It may be interesting to see if there is a way to manage the C-pillar wake without changing the shape.